On our channel, we've had the opportunity to review a lot of high quality subs over the past year, and most of those have been in the $1,000 to $1,500 price range. Well, the sub that we're gonna be reviewing today, the Emotiva RS11, is no exception. Coming in at $1,199. And today, we're gonna to try to figure out how Emotiva's premium offering fares at this very competitive price point. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. All right, so before we get into the specs of this subwoofer, I wanna quickly talk about how the RS11 fits into Emotiva's speaker and subwoofer line. The RS11 is pretty much just a smaller version of the flagship RS13 subwoofer, so it should hopefully offer pretty similar performance, just in a smaller cabinet with a lower price tag. We tested both this subwoofer and the entry-level SE12 sub in our review of the Airmotive 5.1 system, and if you want to check out that video, we'll be sure to leave a link in the description. I also just wanted to quickly mention that our buddy Nemo over at Nemo Propaganda was kind enough to have Emotiva send the subwoofer out to us once he was done with his review. So we just wanted to give him and Emotiva a big thanks for that. We'll also be sure to link his channel in the description just in case you want to check out some more of his videos. He does a great job diving deep into the sound of many different speakers and subwoofers, so make sure you go ahead and check him out. With all of that said, I think it's time to jump straight into the RS11 itself and see what the reference series has to offer. Starting with the specs, the RS11 is a ported box sub with a front firing 11 inch treated paper cone driver and this really thick double rolled rubber surround. This, according to Emotiva, is supposed to help increase the maximum linear excursion of the driver without adding any distortion meaning they can get even more output from a smaller, lighter driver. Of course, a smaller, lighter driver should mean better articulation and faster transient response as well. The 11-inch driver is being powered with Emotiva's 500-watt RMS 1000-watt peak Class D subwoofer amp with built-in 48-bit DSP, which we'll discuss a little more in a bit. The amplifier itself has these really high quality panel mount RCA jacks for left and right LFE input, as well as a balanced XLR mono input just in case your receiver or processor has XLR output for the LFE channels. This is really useful for making long cable runs, so if your processor or receiver is far away from the subwoofer, you should definitely make use of this connector. Other than that, we also have an XLR output for a daisy chaining another sub, and on the bottom, we obviously have an AC power input and a power switch. Now, compared to most other subwoofers, this is actually a pretty bare amplifier. This panel doesn't have any of the useful features that you would actually need to use once you hook up the sub, like the volume and crossover knobs. That's because they're actually on the top of the RS11, all grouped into a convenient little control panel that's very easy to access. And honestly, I really wish manufacturers would take the time to add something like this to their subwoofers because it's way nicer just to be able to fiddle with something on top than having to reach all the way around to the back to change a simple setting. This really cool control panel has a smoked plastic cover that's held on with magnets, and you remove that to get access to the subwoofer's built-in crossover control, as well as the phase and volume controls. There's also switches to enable or disable the built-in crossover, set either the flat or deep EQ settings, and whether the subwoofer should automatically power on or stay on all the time. And just real quick, the flat and deep EQ switch just switches between the two built-in profiles on the RS11's included DSP, so you can choose whichever one you want to match your room and personal preferences. The deep EQ setting gives you a frequency response between 20 and 240 hertz, while the flat setting gives you between 23 and 240 hertz, all within 3 dB. Moving on, I think it's time to talk about the cabinet, which is one of the many selling points of the reference series. The RS11 is made entirely out of high-density fiberboard, just like the other Airmotive speakers that we've tested. 
with one inch thick panels on each side of the sub and a two inch thick front baffle, we wanted to actually see for ourselves what this subwoofer looks like on the inside, so we went ahead and took the driver out. And when we did, the first thing that we noticed was the really nice threaded inserts that Emotiva added to hold the driver in this cabinet. This is really a nice touch because you can basically take the driver in and out as many times as you want without having to worry about stripping out the screw holes, which is actually pretty easy to do even with HDF. It's definitely not something that's necessary, but it shows that the designers put a good amount of thought and care into both the inside and the outside of the RS11. And that just makes a better product. The 11 inch driver itself is built like a tank and has some serious weight to it. And it comes with a double stacked magnet assembly on the back mounted to a very robust and rigid cast aluminum basket. Here you can also see a better shot of the paper cone along with the double roll surround, which not only looks pretty cool, but also helps to increase the driver's excursion. Looking inside the cabinet, you can see the thick bracing that forms the slotted port, which helps reduce cabinet residence, increases rigidity, and basically makes the RS11's cabinet acoustically inert. It also adds to the weight of the sub, which comes in at a hefty 62 pounds. This sub is also on the smaller side, measuring just 15 inches wide by 17 and a quarter inches deep by 15 and a half inches tall. So if your room is on the smaller side, this sub will actually be a great fit. Other than that, the cabinet itself has a really nice matte black finish, which in our opinion looks really good and should be perfect in a home theater environment where you don't want light bouncing all around the room. Of course, as you can see here, the RS11 is a ported box design with this pretty big slotted port right below the driver. This is gonna be a pretty important factor when we get into our tests because the RS11 actually includes a foam port plug, so we'll be testing the sub with the port plug both in and out. Along with the port plug, the RS11 also comes with a pretty nice looking grill that uses very strong magnets and snaps into place very securely, so you shouldn't have to worry about it rattling or falling off while watching a movie. And that's pretty much it for the subwoofer itself. And with all of that out of the way, it's time to start talking about sound quality. And this is where the RS11 was really very impressive. Everything we threw at it sounded awesome, whether it be music or movies. The subwoofer presented with authority while watching movies and subtlety while listening to music. Upper bass notes were impactful with that kick in the pants, punch in the chest feeling you get from things like gunshots or grenades exploding, all while never sounding bloated or overdone. In fact, throughout its entire frequency response, the RS11 proved to be a very even sounding, transparent subwoofer that gave a very realistic sounding reproduction of the original LFE track all the way down to its rated 20 Hz in deep EQ mode. One scene that really stood out to us was the final battle in Avengers Endgame. This part of the movie has such a wide variety of LFE signals in the soundtrack that a lot of lesser subs will start sounding confusing. You might hear some subs struggle with producing the very deep thunderous bass in this scene while also trying to maintain control of the upper frequencies which are going to be those tight slamming sound effects. But this is where the RS11 really gets to take advantage of its engineering and build quality. It reproduced this part of the soundtrack while maintaining complete detail and control of its output. In fact, it did such a good job, we decided to keep turning it up until it got to a point where it was just so much bass we couldn't take it anymore, and it began to overpower our main speakers. Despite this, the sub never actually distorted, and we weren't worried about overdriving it thanks to its transparent limiter, which according to Emotiva, makes it virtually impossible to overload the RS11 or make it sound bad. Throughout our testing, we experimented with the port plug in and out for both movies and music, and as you would expect with the plug in, it tightened the sound up a little, but it also reduced output. We feel this is gonna come down to personal preference whether you use the plug or not, and although we prefer sealed subs, we found that we like the sound of the RS11 in most cases with the port plug out. So in conclusion, we're very impressed with this sub. 
Given the fact that it uses an 11 inch driver mounted in a pretty small ported enclosure, we're surprised at just how much high quality base Emotiva was actually able to get out of the RS11. Is it worth the asking price of $1,200? Well, of course, everyone's perception of value is different, but for what you're getting with the RS11, we feel it's totally worth it. And you should definitely check it out if you're in the market for a subwoofer that can pretty much do it all and sounds amazing while it's doing it. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Let us know down in the comments what kind of subwoofer you're interested in. And if you wanna see more videos like this, here are a couple that I think you might like. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And as always, have an awesome day.